Indeed, I hear you. Cool. Well, yeah, so uh, now that we're here uh, and I can run this file and we can do some nonsense, what, what is, what is, why did you do this, Vigo? Why does, what is Zio Parser? Uh, what, what is it? <clears throat> well, it's uh, very surprisingly a parser library or <laughs> uh, we can say it's an invertible parser library, which means that uh, while you are composing your, your little parsers, you are also building a pretty printer at the same time uh, with hopefully zero F4. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, why? It's uh, simply that I was interested in whether I can make this idea more user-friendly and more performant than previous implementations that I, I was aware of. So it started as an experiment, but it, it was, <laughs> so it, it, it seems to work. So we decided to publish it and, and uh, make and make it sure that uh, it can be used by people, improved by people. So yeah, it's uh, in an early but working state. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll start with some simple examples and I, I've written some more complicated stuff and it is, it is very nice and uh, quite convenient. So hopefully we'll see all of that. Uh, yes, you get a parser <clears throat> and a printer at the same time. I guess we've, we've kind of talked about parsers a little bit before in the past. And so a parser is sort of abstractly uh, parameterized maybe by, I think maybe we have a few more parameters in Zio parser, but just a simple parser would uh, basically consume uh, some string. It's basically a function from string to, you could say option of A. Uh, that's not good enough for an implementation, but that's good enough for sort of like the users uh, and type signatures. So you wanna parse some string, some input, and maybe hopefully you'll get out some type of A. So you might have a parser of, uh, let's say JSON. And so you're gonna parse some string and hopefully if it's if it's valid JSON, according to the parser, you're going to get back a sum of some like JSON object, whatever with, with a map of, of fields. And let's see if that can, yeah. Okay, dot, 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 perfect. Um, and then a printer sort of goes the other way around. Um, so parsers are covariant. They uh, produce A's, potentially produce A's. And printers accept A's, they consume A's. And so this would go from an A to that string representation. And ideally, uh, these are, well, the whole invertibility part is that if you compose them together, if you go from A to string, so if you print and then <clears throat> parse that, you should get back the A you started with. And same thing if you start with a string and you parse that into an A and then print it again, you should get back the same string you, you parsed it with. So it's sort of a round trippable, which is kind of kind of cool. So yeah, you can use uh, uh, this parser pretty printer combo. And I think the combination is called a syntax type. That's why what I've imported here um, is sort of both the printer and the parser. You can uh, sort of get this isomorphism between a value in your language and some string representation. So you can go to and from, and that should round trip. Uh, so yeah, does that all sound groovy? Sweet. So perhaps we should uh, make a very simple parser or syntax invertible parser to, to kick things off. So, huh, does anyone, what would be a, a nice simple domain? I, I could, I'll just pull one out of my butt unless, do you have any favorite uh, little mini example domains, Daniel? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> okay. I, I'm, cu I'm curious what you come up with. <laughs> okay, I, I, I might have done <laughs> I might have done this before, but I think it might just be like a, a chess move type uh, situation <clears throat> where you have, uh, how, do they, how do they do this? Like E5 to E6 or whatever. Um, so you'd have like a, a chess coordinate, which would basically have like a, a row, which would be a, a character and a, a column, which would be a number. And I don't even know if I'm getting that correct. And these aren't fully specified, but this is like, you know, E6, E8, knight to E8, etc. Usually, I think it would go like, we could just come up with our own stupid syntax. So let's say E8 to A1. It's not even chess, but yeah. <laughs> um, so you can have a chess move is basically from chess chord to chess chord. And then maybe lastly, like sort of a, a chess game will be a, uh, a series of moves, right? Which would be, let's just say a list of chess moves. So we, this might be our, our data type. Our data structure here, and uh, we might want to parse this um, 
into you know this kind of thing. So if we if we had this is a string uh, to b through eight and c seven to a two, and this totally does not make sense as chess. Probably should have chosen a different domain. We would want to get back something that if if uh, GitHub Copilot's clever enough. We'll do, yeah, we'll do that um, val example. So yeah, we basically want to make sure it parses this into this. And let's see if it can generate us a string. So kind of like to do this a8. Oh yeah, e8 two. Can you finish this off for me? A1. And then B2, B8, and C7, A2, great. Is that all? There we go. Uh, so I'll delete my little comments. So yeah, that's basically, I'll zoom out a little bit more. That's basically the idea is that we want to write a parser for this that will parse it into this, but also simultaneously a printer for this that will print it into this format. Um, and does that sound like something that might be accomplishable with ZO syntax or ZO parser? Yes. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. Amazing. So I don't know about you, but when I start to write parsers, I kind of like to start from the, 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 the inside, the simple pieces first. Um, so, I mean, I guess you could, we can use stubs and start from the outside as well, but it might be nice to just start seeing that something is working. So maybe we should just start with a chess chord parser or chess chord syntax. Um, so down here, I'm just going to paste the implementation so we kind of know what it looks like and basically we want to get some uh, chess chord syntax so we want something that's going to be able to, to do this and in order to do this we need to basically parse sort of a character and then an integer so um the way uh we we parse things is well syntax dot and then we get a whole bunch of constructors here um, I guess we could start with any char for our row. Now we probably want to change this later on because uh, we probably just want it to be one of a specific number of cars. And in fact, I think there's a car in, right? And this takes, uh, yeah, either a list yeah. of car or a string. So we'll just do uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I believe. I think it's eight by eight in chess. So we'll, we'll do that. Um, and then uh, that will get us a, a, a parser of a car. Or a syntax of a car, and well, there's we can discuss the uh, <laughs> the um, the type parameters momentarily because uh, that probably it's a lot of car, 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 car. But and then uh, so we want to basically parse, you know, some examples. You know, this is the E8 or the A1, and we want to parse this into chess chord of E8 and then A1. So this handles just the E and the A part, and then we want to sort of sequentially. If that matches, parse it with, I guess, um, is there any sort of uh, alpha? Oh, there's alphanumeric. We might need I to- I think it's called digit. Digit, thank you. <clears throat> digit, and will this parse just a single digit, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and yes, we wanna make sure it only is between one and eight, uh, and, but we can handle that just in a minute so we can move uh, a little faster, um, though I'm, it's quite easy, but just so we can get to the end results. And then, well, this is, if, if we look at what we get here in terms of our results, well, we have this car, 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 car. Oh, and it looks like it's actually a digit um, of a car, so it does not turn it into an int yet. So we could probably um, transform this into uh, into an actual int. I'm not sure. Is there a better way of doing this currently? Uh, no, you have to use a transform. So you cannot just simply map it because it has to be defined in both ways for the printer as well. So it's it's a combination of a map and a conversion from character to integer and also from integer to character. Okay, nice. Okay, so let's, mm. let me actually, so when the, when this happens, I when we need something a little more specific, uh, I kind of like to just pull it out into its own thing as we'll probably potentially in the future be reused like an int, int syntax. Um, int syntax. And so we want to transform this, uh, basically going from the character to what we want as our output, which is going to be an integer. Um, and I forget exactly if we just do uh, two ints, I believe this will actually get you sort of the, the, the car code. Um, so what I tend to do is if I want the actual int that that character represents is this, I think there's a, a shorter way of doing that. Maybe it's two int value, but just so this works correctly. 
Um, I'm going to do that. And then this is going to go from that int to car just by doing, uh, I guess I could just do underscore two string. So we'll go back to this. Uh, oops, yeah, two string. And then um, I guess I can call head on it. There's probably a better way to do that as well. Uh, and now, now uh, if we look at this syntax, basically it gets us an int. Um, uh, and I'm just paying attention basically to the last two fields here. Uh, once we get this to run, we can go back and explain what all these other fields mean. Um, so let's go back. So now we have int syntax. And now if I regenerate this, so we're going to get a tuple of a car and an int. And it appears twice basically because we can accept these into print them. It's sort of like one of these parameters is for the printer, one of them is for the parser. Uh, but once again, we'll, we'll go back to that in a moment. So now that we have that, what we want to do is we actually want to do that same transform operation again, where we want to go from a uh, that, that car int to our result, which is in this case going to be a chess chord, which I could just use car int. And then we need to go the other way around. So I'll say case chess chord, car int, and basically just yeah, do, do that. So now we should have a, a chess chord parser. And it looks like maybe I'm screwing something up because we probably want both of these to be chess chord. OK, there we go. OK, uh, so now let's actually try to run this on some stuff. So how do you run a syntax? Well, you can either do, uh, you can print. So I can give it a chess chord. And I can print an existing one. So I'll do uh, a three val results, and we can take a look at that. So let's take a look at the results. <laughs> That's not produced by the parser or the printer. <laughs> <laughs> At least I don't know anything about that. <laughs> you can all hear the, the meowing. Wow, you're so vocal. Yes. Oh, she's she's by a mouse. And now she's by another cat, so everything's good. OK, they, they, will, they will play with each other for the time being. Uh, it's crumb and worm. Are hanging out. Okay, so we have a chunk of A3, and that's basically the output. Um, so we probably want to, and it's inside of a, a, a write. So for now, I could just do two option dot get and then make string if we want it to look um, like the actual output, because we get a chunk of each character. Uh, basically, it, it outputs chunks of characters and reads chunks. I, th I think you have a print string method actually that does it. Oh, really? Oh, print string? Oh, look at that. Okay, that is even better. That's why I'm very glad you're here. So now this will be an, uh, an either of a string. So there, let's pull that out. So just A3. Great, so you can print it, but then also what we can do is uh, parse it, right? Parsed, that's kind of the whole idea. So we could parse a string and we'll parse, uh, you know, B, B8. Let's print parsed. And there it is, a chess chord of B8. And obviously, if we were to parse the result dot two option dot get, we should end up back with the A3 that we started with. So we'll, we'll go from chess chord to A3 to A3 back to chess chord A3. So those should, those should be equal. Um, so yeah, if, if I said start, and this is our uh, end dot two option dot get, start should be equal to n. We basically have, have round tripped ourselves. Hooray, true. Uh, wonderful. So that's that's sort of the simplest, uh, very using some very simple features of, of the parser, um, where we basically use some basic instructors. And then this tilde operator is what lets us essentially compose these sequentially, because parsers tend to encode this sort of left to right behavior. First, we want a car, then we want um, the, the, the int. Um, and then and then you transform them, and then they're composable. So now that we've made this chess chord syntax, we can now do something like our chess move. So let's uh, take this down here, and let me see if uh, this is smart enough to do something. So I basically want to have uh, e8 to b7 should be equal to, let's see, chess move indeed. Um, and give me another example. Cool. Uh, so yeah, we want to be able to parse chess moves now. And I think I can just say chess move syntax. And then let's just see if it can do this for us. Uh, yeah, so almost. It's a little aspirational there. 
Uh, I don't know. Is there is there an auto converter somewhere for converting the strings into uh, probably not uh, into syntax, an extension method or something? Uh, no, not, no extension method. But uh, I think there is something for. I don't remember. <laughs> but what should I do here in this case? It's it's syntax dot um, string. Oh yes. yeah, that's uh, that's the one. <laughs> I think. Okay, so I didn't remember the, the name of the method, but yeah. Oh, it needs a value here. So yeah, this is a good also opportunity. I think maybe like there should be a, probably also a default version that just does unit in case you want um, just to have these literals like this. Uh, but that is, that is great. Um, so yeah, the only problem with this, well, we'll take a look at a minute. So basically we're using, we're reusing our previous chess chord syntax uh twice which is totally fine so we're going to do chess chord syntax then we're going to parse this this arrow then we're going to do chess chord syntax again um and then we're going to transform we're going to basically get the from and the to and it throws away it, it automatically using uh sort of that zippable type that we've discussed in the past will throw away any units so you don't have to match on this inner uh value that's just parsed really as it's literal it doesn't give us any information so that's not going to show up in either of these tuples and if there were more bits of interesting uh, syntax zipped together here, it would be a threefold or a fourfold, and so on and so forth. Um, cool. And I think I believe like some other syntactic improvements are coming along uh, in the future. Maybe some like right. I think you mentioned uh, something like as or, or something like this chess move. We can make. Some uh, yes, yes. I, I wrote a very similar macro into zio config earlier, which is called dot two, I think. But yeah, the idea is that all these transformations from tuples to to case classes is, is something that you can very easily automate. So that's yeah. something that will be part of the library soon. Great. Yeah. So now let's basically do the same thing, except with fair move result. Let's see if I can use chess move syntax dot print string. And then we'll throw a move in here. Great. And we'll print that. And then sort of go the other way. And make sure this round trips. Oh, ah, and it, okay. Oh, so this is actually one thing. Um, I think I think because of the fact that these aren't. Uh, oh, because they, yeah, they could be totally different. So it can't really infer based on the result because it's not necessarily inverting all the time. Like you're, that's why there are these two type parameters because it can differ. And I guess in this case, I don't want them to differ. So that's that's a bit of an interesting. Um, uh, a case. Um, so it, it was, I think it was widening this to any essentially, because yeah, you can match on anything and it's just going to blow up, I guess, in the case that it's not, not this. Um, so I need to currently add, uh, that there. So it's not confused. Um, but let's print this real quick and then we can talk about all that. So now it's a one to B eight and there's no space in between. Um, and that's because I didn't, uh, really include that. And in fact, I believe if I try to parse a string a1 to b8 like I wrote above with spaces, this will actually not work and it will get me a, a failure. It's saying that it's 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 not this. Hey, a nice failure message. It's, it's not what we looked for because what it is in fact is space arrow that. So these parsers are you know very literal. They're not just going to automatically deal with white space for you because that's probably not part of every parser. Sometimes you definitely don't want everything to be spaced out. We didn't want you to have ample amounts of white space, for instance, between um, your A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and your int. So if you want to deal with that, you can deal with that yourself, and we will do that right now, actually. So I think I do want there to be a space between this. Um, so I think there's a syntax dot white space. And so we'll add that in between there. Um, oh, and this actually does get you the, the white space character back currently. So you could do unit to throw that away because I do not actually care about that information. Uh, oh, is that correct? Oh, but it keeps it on both. Oh, interesting. OK. So is there a way to get unit on both, or is it ignore? No. I think if you write that uh, unit and provide a parameter, how, how you want to print it, like a single space or something. Ah, uh, uh, OK. So OK, now I can decide how I want to print it. I guess I screwed something up here. Oh, dot units. There we go. Again, we'll put this onto a second line. Okay. So there are some 
slight complexities based on the fact that it has to both parse and print, but that sounds pretty good to me. Okay. Um, all right. And now I will run this again. And now it does indeed parse it successfully. Yeah, but it still it. only only accepts a single byte space. Yeah, that's something to, to notice here. Mm -hmm. So if you want multiple ones, you can write repeat, for example. Yeah. So if I wanted multiple, I would say repeats. Oh, thank you. Yeah, repeat and just repeat, right? If I wanted, okay, now make sure that there is at least one. Um, and should I do this this dot unit here? Units? No, no, it was good. Uh, just uh, it was. Um, <laughs> uh, the the uh. reason why it fails now is that uh, when you are, are using this unit method, you have to provide the um, the input for the printer and uh, for the input for the white space dot repeat printer is a chunk of of characters, not a single character. So basically, you have to write this. But uh -huh. uh, yeah, so this is the point where you should extract all this uh, yeah <laughs> this part to, uh, uh -huh. to a separate separate uh, method. Okay, so I will pull both of these out and and basically say, uh, I'll just call this <clears throat> white space because it's not qualified, and then we'll have yeah. repeat white space. Or maybe I'll call it spaces to be a little clearer that it's it's plural. Though this will turn into just when it's printed back out a single space based on the fact that it's yeah, and, and it's probably not that easy to understand first why you have to specify that chunk of single space, but the reason is that you can parse a lot of different uh series of characters with this white space dot repeat like it could be i don't know 30 spaces or some tabs and new lines and so on and uh without specifying how you want to invert it because you lose this information because of converting the every every different uh, white space input is converted to unit so there is no way to to <clears throat> recreate the same sequence so that's why we have to specify how we want to recreate it when you are, we are printing it. Yeah, and I think maybe if we could look at that with a different type, if we go, let's do our, our last thing, which is this chess game. So I'll do the uh, chess game example. Oh, what did I just copy? Oh, there, it's, there's my <laughs> link. Um, uh, there we go, uh, no. okay, chess game. I don't know what happened to my, my clipboard. Uh, where are we at the bottom? Okay, there we go. So what we wanna do here is basically um, new lines separated uh, chess moves, I suppose. So let's see if this is good. Chess game syntax. Let's see what it can do for us. Uh, almost, almost. So we basically wanna reuse our chess move syntax and we just want to repeat this, but we wanted to do it separated by something. So there's repeat with Sep, and then we can have our own syntax here. So we could say uh, um, syntax syntax um, car in. I guess I want it to be a new line or car new line. So we want it to be separated by this. Oh, and is that is that sad because oh I need yeah. to give a why is it sad? Repeat with sep unit to unit. Hmm. I, uh, I think, just a second. <laughs> yeah. I think you have to to convert it to unit or something like that, because uh, yeah, it has to be a unit unit. So, <clears throat> so what you have to do, I I try to fix it for you. <laughs> Is the dot dot unit syntax again? Yeah, I think so. But that's one of the possibilities. Uh, probably there are other options as well, but I don't remember now. Or, oh, there are, there is an easier, I think. Uh, this remote IntelliJ is not really working well for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, I didn't remember the name of the methods and it's not showing any pop-ups for me, so okay. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> yeah, so there is a variant which is, is giving unit unit, I think. Uh, oh, car. Ah, that, okay, that is already one. Oh. Okay. Oh, I just wasn't giving it a character. I think I was giving it a string. I oh, yeah, I... yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, the string is only good for the character in method where you yeah. can use it as, as a replacement for a chunk of characters. Multiple characters. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
So now basically I am, I am getting a, uh, in this case, this returns, if I break this out into its own value, um, yeah, I'll just call it value, great. This is going to get me a, a parser of a chunk of chess moves. So if going back to that previous example, if I did dot unit here, I would need to provide uh, a chunk of chess moves. Um, so it would successfully parse out a chunk of chess moves, but then just not actually give us anything. It, it could give, see, let me do this real quick. Units, uh, chunk, I'll just do empty uh, and regenerate this. So now it's a, it's a parser that doesn't give us any information and will always print basically whatever we um, put in here. So I can give it a chess move. Um, and so basically this will try to parse out a bunch of chess moves, but then we're not gonna be able to extract that value out of this parser. It's basically where we're saying for whatever reason, doesn't really make sense given this syntax um, that we just wanna make sure that there's a bunch of chess moves in our, in our greater language, but we don't care about using the results of parsing those. Um, and then if, if, if we wanna basically throw away that chunk of chess moves, we can say unit, but then there's the fact that we also might wanna print. And this is also a printer, it's not just a parser. So what do you do? How do you print uh, a chunk of chess moves? Um, if, if you, if you, well, you'd either need to still accept a chunk of chess moves or you could throw away the printing input as long as you gave it sort of a default that it's going to print. Uh, it probably didn't make the most sense, but yeah, it's, it can be a little complicated, um, but it's worth it because you get this printer for free. Anyway, we don't need to do any of this right now. Um, so let me undo all that, put this back in here and let's try to actually parse uh, an entire chess game. So we have our example and we have our other thing. So where's the example? Let's take a look at what this was. That was this. And then I'll, I'll also take our string. Well, let's just run this first and see what happens. See if it round trips successfully. Uh oh, something bad happened. E8. Okay, let's see where this would be. And maybe there's some problem with the parsing. I might need to like make something lazy, I'm su I suppose it's possible. Is it done? Okay, yeah, so it seems like there was some problem with parsing this. Seems to, seems to have hanged. So let's go up to chess game syntax, or rather let me just do E8 to E7 and print that and see if that even works. No, so it looks like there's some problem with the chess game syntax. Um, do you think, do you see anything that could be uh, deadly here? What have I potentially screwed <clears throat> up? Maybe there is some issue this. I know you said there were maybe a couple possible issues remaining. As we mentioned, this is, a sort of a new library. It's very cool, but there might be, it looks like there's some kind of loop or, or something mm -hmm. that's being here. I, I don't see it yet. <laughs> I wonder, did I do any sort of, uh, everything is defined after. I don't have any sort of lazy val issues, I don't believe. No. Oh, wait, it finished. What? <laughs> 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 so that just took a strangely long amount of time. <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not it's not the fastest parser in the world, but not that. So <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> uh, gamers don't let you often that. Yes. Let me try that again and see. Okay, yeah, something definitely weird is happening internally, I guess, with the um with this. Well, that's good. Uh well, it's not good, but hey, we may have found an <laughs> issue or something. Um, I wonder if I just do syntax dot white space, if maybe that's the problem in my custom parser there, because I think this will also parse new lines and I'll just give it a character of a new line. Uh, just to try to see if, nope, I don't think it was that. Maybe it was the repeat with step uh, part actually. So um, let me just do chunk. I mean, uh, this is basically just delegating to another one, uh, chunk. Uh, oh, list, list, and this will just basically be moves.head in that case. And then I'll just give it a game with a single move, A4, and see if that is happy. No, it's very weird because really this isn't doing much beyond chess move syntax, which was totally fine. 
So if what if I literally just make this chess move syntax then? <laughs> this is very weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe it's something totally different. I, I don't I don't know. Maybe it's yeah, what? I, I don't trust your computer. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, I mean that makes no sense because I'm literally just telling something <laughs> that okay, now it's acting weird in general, but that what this didn't that this was working fine a moment ago. Let me try this. Okay, like that's oh no. So maybe that maybe that was hanging before and I just didn't notice it. That's possible as well. Um, because it, it's not printing the parsed thing here. Huh, let me let me go back to maybe it's when we introduced that spaces type. I, I don't know why that would have mattered, but let me just do a single white space. Um Maybe there's a problem with the repeat. I mean, it feels like something's repeating. Okay, so I think that was the, the issue. I don't know why. <laughs> Let me do this. Okay, and then that would be uh, moves dot to list and chunk dot from iterable. There we go. Okay, oh, and then I need to give this a type and say chess game, chess chess game. Okay, and now it should work if I say game result dot two option dot guess and try to parse back out the game that we printed. Uh, oh, uh, oh, you know, what? I think so I think it must be some there's some some issue currently with repeat with then, because that was kind of what I was using before. That's super odd, though. I haven't run into that before. I wonder if it is something with this this computer session. I, I don't know. Because I definitely was using repeat with Sep on my other parser, though I did bump mm. a version. Maybe I can go back one point version. I don't know what you would have changed, but maybe <laughs> some weird yeah, the, the oh, only, dif that. only difference is update to latest zero two RC. So I was not doing any any other parser related improvements recently. And uh, yeah, the repeat and the repeat with Sep definitely worked Wait. before because they are using all the example parsers and all the unit tests and everywhere. So it's very yeah. weird. I don't know if it would be that much of a difference, but I mean, I definitely find my computer is significantly slower when I'm doing kind of the, the Zoom stuff. If I'm doing anything that's like non trivial. Mm -hmm. It seems to be faster now. I don't know why, but actually, I think the version down did fix it. Uh, I wonder if there's some other issue. Hmm. Let me let me bump the back up. <laughs> Zio bug report incoming. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe is it, does this does parse string use uh, Zio at all in, in the in the parsing of the string? I don't <laughs> think so. Okay, maybe it was just I just needed to reload my dependencies or something. Yeah, actually, now it's working. So what the hell? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Maybe there was some loading issue going on. I have no idea why that would have done that. <laughs> um, yeah, that's great. So repeats. Let me go back to this variance and make sure that that's still all cool. <sighs> oh. <laughs> okay. No, no idea what's happening. Um, fun. All right. Well, that's exciting. Um, what? Why? <laughs> can you can you try to run it uh, from I don't know from not IntelliJ or something? Right? Yeah, yeah. Let's do let's do the terminal. <laughs> That's a good idea. As much as I love my little um, feedback loop, um, that is not good. Run parsing dot example parser. Run main parsing dot example parser. And then we can talk about all the, the type parameters. Why, why, is, why is the compilation that so? Okay, that works. I think it's because it's, this is not the only thing in here I have. There's like a lot of <laughs> Okay. Uh, let me add a tilde or whatever I just did. Okay, perfect. And now let me do repeats <laughs> um, and then a chunk of a single character. No, it seems, it seems like oh. repeat is sad. I don't know. And let oh. me do that. And just bump the version down just to make sure that that. Mm -hmm. Oh, but now I gotta kill it. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, seems to be failing. Yeah, but you have to reload the SBT, I think. I think it did automatically. It said reloaded. Um, yeah, I think I reloaded it. Mm -hmm. 
Let me just make sure though. Reload. And yeah, okay. so it seems like it, okay, so it's not a version issue. Um, Interesting. I wonder if repeat zero would, would work or it's just this one. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, it looks like the repeating seems to break it in some way. So that's, that's, that's good. Uh, it's good to know. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder why, I wonder if I make this lazy val and not even break it, just like make it take a long time, which is really strange. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so who knows okay cool um lazy val i'm gonna make everything lazy that shouldn't matter <laughs> okay so we'll ignore that for now i will not use the repeat there that definitely should work anyway bug report now we have a nice little minimal, minimal example to look at in the future but uh yeah i ha haven't run into that before um we'll go to my much more complex example where i'm definitely calling repeat a whole lot of times and haven't run into that so i <laughs> don't know <laughs> what is going on here but it's clearly something um anyway maybe we should talk about what all these type parameters are now that we've sort of shown off a pretty simple example what's why what does this all mean what which how should we label these things i guess i can go here and maybe even look at the docs but yeah can you just talk us through what this stuff is uh yeah so first parameter is an error type it's a similar thing like in in the zeo type or or the zero related, <laughs> in order to zero related libraries. Uh, the default error type in many of the syntax constructors is string because that's that's uh, something a good default in a part of library, I would say. Like for example, if if you I don't know call a syntax dot character and then specify that you want an A or a B. And you are parsing a C, then it it will generate a default error message that uh, the character was not A or B or something like that. So string is a default, but you can uh, use custom error types in the usual way with map error and so on. Uh, so input and output. Um, input is the <coughs> so these these two are in 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 our examples are characters, and this is basically the stream element type if you are parsing an input and the stream streamed output element type if you are printing so uh, currently we are not really supporting <laughs> anything else than characters here but uh, in earlier prototypes uh, it was basically customizable fully and um, that has some use cases like for example instead of uh, parsing directly characters uh, you may want to create a tokenizer first, which parses the characters into some kind of stream of tokens. And then you can write a different syntax, which works on not on the stream of characters, but on the stream of tokens, for example. Yeah. Or you, you can imagine that you are not outputting uh, directly characters, but something that, uh, I don't know, contains formatting information or whatever. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> And uh, as you already said, the value is the value that is going to be printed. And the result is the thing that uh, comes out of running the whole thing, which in the case of parser is the parsed value. And in the case of printer, it's, it's uh, also like it's outputting the same, usually the same value that was, was in, but that's only for composition. Yeah, sure. And I guess there are some cases where you, that might want to split up and have a different printer than parser. Um, it's kind of like the Z, the Z variants, though I, most of the Z variants have been. Uh, Z, Z variants are dead. So don't apologize to the Z variants. <laughs> the, the Z variants are, are dead, yes. Um, I mean, maybe, do you think maybe there would be eventual fusion of this um, to help certain I did, I mean, or, I mean, there's a couple of solutions. I think one unfortunate business here is like, if I do not specifically annotate this, it seems to infer that that's any, just because of the, the I guess, how it infers case matches. I wish it were. Uh, yeah, but if, if you would uh, write, not a case match there, but like specify the parameter type directly, then I think it works without this type. I oh, mean, sure, sure, sure. Like, uh, like this. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Numbers, which is is not the end of the world by any means, but you know. Yeah, and, and I don't know. Maybe maybe yeah. maybe maybe Adam knows some tricks to improve the <laughs> type difference. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Well, yeah, I, I, the main reason for separating the two is the invariance, or I mean the co and contravariance of them, and and to make make the whole thing nicely composable. I think mm -hmm. so. It's not uh, not like there is ever direct use case where you want to separate types there. It's just that that's the way how everything composes together. Gotcha. <laughs> but uh, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong about this. It might be worth exploring. I think there might be some ways of doing it. Obviously, I think in map you might need to, or the, you don't really have a map, so you have transform. I mean, there is the map printer and map parser where you, these can end up diverging, but I think in many cases, I mean, so I think there used to be a type called ZREF, which was usually you deal with a ref of some type, but ZREF yeah. allowed you to map over just the input and output. So it sort of would do this processing internally. So you could set ints, but get out strings because it would internally call to string on the ints or something before you got it out, uh, which is uh, cool and very compositional. But sometimes there's a trade off with usability, like because of these extra types, and you would end up maybe accidentally yeah. giving yourself a ZREF when you didn't want one. Um, yeah, one one place where I'm not sure that it would work mm -hmm. uh, or it would be as as nice as as it could be is uh, when you are composing multiple things with an OR operator, like different constructors of a sum type, for example. Uh, Def I can't search for that. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wonder. It might be worth exploring, but I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it could make some certain cases like yeah, not having like being able to use case matches and just uh, oh, oh, the undo buffer has been destroyed. <laughs> oh no, what has happened? There we go. Is it compiling? Oh. No, no, no. Okay, I will. I will uh, have it do this for me. Do it. Nice chunk got from iterable. Thank you, copilot. All right, and we'll make this a chess game. Um, but yeah, overall, it's it's a very beautiful and wonderful library. Let me show everyone a, a much more complicated example uh, that exists somewhere, um, which is for SQLs. Oh, no, that's the wrong project. Zio app, yes. Um, so this one parses, uh, I mean, it's only 200 lines or so, but it basically parses uh, SQL files, not entirely, obviously, um, Postgres in particular. Uh, it's not the full spec yet, but it's sort of create table and alter table. Um, some of some of these things. So just to sort of show off what that does is that basically I have this little test here, which will assert that this uh, SQL uh, construct, this alter table construct, which does all the variants uh, of, of, of SQL, uh, will print, will round trip essentially to the this AST. So a SQL alter table that is a name and then a whole bunch of these alter table actions like add column and has the types in there and whether or not it's using the if not exists flag and whatnot um a whole bunch of things um using this uh alter table parser so and it, this all works currently uh it doesn't hang out mysteriously uh i don't know why that was happening in that example but this totally <laughs> and very quickly parses everything back and forth. Um, and just to look at this, uh, because maybe this adds a couple other things. Um, so basically this, what this looks like is I copied this string from uh, the Postgres docs and actually Copilot, once you have a few parsers on the page, it can really be nice for like cranking out part syntax, uh, um, syntax syntax like this. Um, so what this does, is basically, well, we want to match alter table uh, case insensitively, which is just uh, a parser I made um, that will match the string to uppercase and then all lowercase. Um, and then there's this little or else pipe, which we haven't used, but basically it will match either one. So if this fails to parse or to print, it will then fall back to, uh, to this one. Cool. And I made a variant where I can give a default value if I wanted to. Um, Sweet. And then I have if exists, which basically this one I think is pretty, pretty nice, where I um, see if, if exists is there. And then I, there's the dot optional or dot question mark uh, method, which means that it'll basically get you back a new parser printer um, where the, the previous value is now optional. So I basically get an option of unit. Um, and then I transform that. And basically, if 
I fold over the option of units. So if it were empty, I, I do false. And if it were there, it's true. So basically, and then I have to go the other way. So if it was true, I have a sum of unit, otherwise none. Um, so basically maybe there's a, there's a terser way of doing this. And in fact, that might be a cool overload to have just like, cause sometimes I think that's a com common thing, like some optional Boolean thing or something if, if the type is unit. Um, because basically I just, if, if this flag exists, then it's true, otherwise it's false. And I do the same thing for if not exists with a different word. Uh, and then I match my little ident, which is just a, a custom uh, filter car parser, uh, because I don't want to parse a bunch of characters. So I'm filtering characters and making sure it's not white space and it doesn't contain opening or closing parens or semicolons or commas. And then there's at least one character um, or at least zero characters, I guess. I probably should make that at least one, but it hasn't screwed me up yet. So, <laughs> uh, so that's fine. Um, and then columns is uh, basically I repeat uh, this, this other syntax tree, which parses out a column ADT and a whole bunch of them. Uh, oh, this is for create table. So I accidentally went to create table. So but that's how create table exists. Um, I was looking at alter table a moment ago. So where is this? Yes. Um, and then I have a whole bunch of actions. Yes. So after my uh, alter table, if exists the name of the table, and then basically a list of actions that are repeat with SEP and it totally works commas. Um, and yeah, and these can have spaces on either side, um, which is kind of, kind of nice. And the only thing I really added was this double tilde operator, which will, so I don't have to keep doing self spaces that it will just in, insert a spaces uh, parser and printer in between uh, each side, because uh, I found that that was a common thing. And maybe, maybe also just adding that to the library, not sure. Uh, and spaces one will print back out as a single space, whereas spaces will print back out as, as no spaces. Um, so that's because I basically want, when I, I want to parse potentially lots of white space, but when I print it back out, uh, I want it to render as, um, a single space, so it can look uh, look good, um, and I do a similar thing with some new lines. But that's basically that's basically it. I think the only other thing that we didn't look at in the other bit of code was this uh, widen. So if say so, I have this uh, sealed trait. When you, when you have a sealed trait that you want to parse, because we didn't really do that in the other example, um, I have this constraint that has a few different um, values. So a primary key constraint references default or not null. Um, and these all look slightly different. Uh, and basically, I want to just be able to say, uh, make a constraint parser, but each constraint looks slightly different. So I have a different parser for each of them. So there's a primary key parser uh, that has an identifier. So you can either in SQL syntax, you can either say just primary key. So like something like text or whatever, ID uh, integer or something, or UUID, you could just say primary key or you could say constraint, uh, uh, whatever, user ID, primary key. But both of these, I want them to parse out as primary keys because I made my primary key look like this, where it has an optional name parameter. So if you just say primary key, you're going to get a primary key with none as a name. And if you had the constraint with an identifier and then the word primary key, I wanted to take that name and put that in the primary key. Uh, uh, great. <laughs> um, and, and then, so I want to then, and I made these other ones for default and, and not null and so on, but then I just want one constraint parser. So the way this works currently is you basically list out each of those and you join them each with a, a pipe, but you do have to widen them first to constraint. Um, so you widen them all to their, their super type, which, uh, I think there is a possibility of a macro. Uh, in the in the future, that will basically just you could just say something like you know, uh, choices or choose or something, it's constraint, and then just list list them all like that. Yeah. I, I'm not even sure that you need a macro for that actually. Oh, I want okay. it. Cool. but uh, maybe maybe you're right. But yeah, I, I, I definitely wanted to do something like this before. Yeah, <laughs> I try I tried it minimally here, and it and it seemed to just because of the implementation that it needs mm -hmm. a a class tag. It was acting a little funny for me. Um, just because of the, the stuff that's going on there. Uh, 
but mm -hmm. maybe it might be possible. Um, I think uh, it's yes, awesome. yes if, if you want to generate these widens, uh, then uh, you can do it with a macro, but maybe you can you can do something that uh, that the widen itself does <laughs> uh, directly, but I am not sure. It's it's one of the improvement ideas, yes. Yeah, I mean it's but anyway, overall I've found the library using it to do this like really pretty nice. Um I'm gonna run <coughs> those issues we ran with the simple example. I don't really don't know if that's because of the library or something I was doing uh with lazy valves or something, because I do use repeat with um a bunch of times. I guess I don't do it. Yeah, I use repeat zero, I use repeat with sep. I don't just use repeat, so maybe repeat was where the problem lived. Where were we? Uh, I know the repeat is one of the primitive operators of the parser, so I would be that is not working. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that would be a problem, but yeah. Um, anyway, um, so I, I didn't run into any issues in, in, in the real world, and uh, it was uh, it's quite convenient for making a whole bunch of parsers and I have a whole bunch of tests here. Um, and yeah, maybe I'll, I'll push this up to my uh, Zio app. Let's do that. Uh, some SQL parsing for no reason. Yay. Cool. GH repo view W. Great. So if anyone wants to take a look at a more complex example, I will do syntax here. SQL syntax. Great. So I'll post this in here so you can take a look at that. Um, were there any uh, questions? I did not look. Was there anything interesting? Um, uh, there was some talk about tokenizers uh, versus parsers. I think Danny got into that a little bit on the Discord. I don't know if we want to hit on that uh, at all here. OK. OK. Um, well, I mean, if there are any questions, definitely ask them. But uh, I, you know, I, I know it's probably taken less time today than usual. We didn't go to an hour and 30 minutes, but I mean, I feel like <laughs> the pretty clear That's library, I, I think it would be good to have yeah. another another session um, some other time in terms of like, I'm curious about how, I think we did building a parser from scratch before, maybe building a printer from scratch. Uh, could be so, yeah, so, so Damien was just asking about the, the printers. So, I mean, if we want to do a follow-up, then that, that's maybe a good reason to leave it here. But uh, yeah, there was a question about saying that the printer functionality. Yeah, I think I think let's do it as a follow-up just because it'll okay. be fun to build that from yeah, scratch yeah. And, the, and the, yeah. so people can can get that um, in a tighter video format. I'm kind of thinking in general that maybe like an hour. Yeah, maybe. I, I think maybe hour and a half is not the most consumable format. I mean, I think it's good if we like really doing things and we like need the time. But yeah, I think that is uh, very fair. <laughs> If it's it, maybe, yeah, if that could be our new magic time as we get more yeah. professional. Um, yeah, uh, not because we're lazy. I, I'd love to go an hour and 30 minutes, okay. yeah, but I think um, probably an hour is, is, that means we have to be more prepared. <laughs> um, it, it's good to at least target, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but right. yeah, if, if awesome. there are any other questions or anything, just leave a uh, message them in the Discord or open an issue in our friendly repository. As uh, That'll probably never happen because I've mentioned that a lot. Um, the Discord is good though, the Discord is good. Um, yeah, so, oh, I, I got a notification. Oh, my workflow succeeded for Master Branch, perfect. Uh, yeah, well, thank you. Thank you, Daniel, for, for stopping yeah. by and, and making sure I wasn't abusing your library in ways it wasn't intended for. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> um, yeah, well, yeah, take care, everybody. See you next week. <laughs>